This is the GeForce GTX 580 Matrix Platinum Republic of Gamers graphics card. It comes in a huge box and it is a very special video card. So it uses the GTX 580 GPU. It has 1.5 gigs of memory. It is clocked pretty high and stuff. It's got a memory interface. It's got maximum digital resolution of 2560 by 1600. Okay, it has display port out, which is kind of cool. And a minimum of 700 watt system power supply is recommended for the use of this card. And you will see why once I get it opened up, because it's all big and impressive and consumes lots of power, but it consumes lots of power because it's powerful. So it is designed for overclocking enthusiasts. Following the success of the Extreme tweak Tweaker features, Asus has created the new Tweak It to give users flexible overclocking control even when running benchmark programs. So yes, you can adjust the frequency of this card with onboard buttons. Pretty crazy, am I right? Real-time hardware loading monitoring with the LEDs over here. So blue is light loading, green is safe mode, pink is heavy loading, blue is medium loading, and red is extreme loading. So that actually doesn't seem to be here. Maybe that's somewhere else. I guess we'll, uh, we'll check that out. We'll check that out. Okay. GPU tweak is their utility for overclocking. It uses direct CU2 technology for the cooler, and it has 19 phase super... 19 phases? Okay, it has 19 phase super alloy power for the PWM on this card. Let's go ahead and get it opened up. Wow, we've actually got an accessory box as well as a box for the card itself. So because this is a GTX 580 card, what that means is we do have support for all of NVIDIA's technologies, including 3D Vision, 3D Vision Surround if you run an SLI. We do obviously have support for SLI up to three-way or even four-way if you have a motherboard that supports it. You've got support for CUDA, PhysX, all of that good stuff. This is a great sticker. Check out this sticker. It's all shiny and red and black. It looks outstanding. GTX 580 driver and manual. Get rid of it. Download the latest off the NVIDIA website. You can just download a regular GTX 580 driver. There's no need for a special driver. Here's a quick setup guide. We've also got a couple of dual 6-pin to 8-pin PCIe power adapters, and we've got an SLI bridge included. Hey, that's thoughtful. Okay, it's a longer SLI bridge. Uh, we've got a DVI to VGA adapter, although honestly guys, if you're using a VGA monitor with a graphics card of this caliber, then I would recommend a monitor upgrade instead of buying a graphics card of this caliber. Oh man, this thing's redonkulous. Look at this. Oh, so that's where your real-time loading indicator is. Ooh, that's, that's a cool feature. So it actually glows a different color depending on how much load the graphics card is under. Very cool. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's start with the power connectors. So we have dual 8-pin PCIe power connectors that are required to power this board. We've also got a full cover backplate on the back of the board actually here. Yeah, check that out. That looks really sharp. So you can see that it's, um, actually I can't tell if it's making contact with anything over there. Looks like it's not. Okay, so this is mostly for looks in all likelihood, but it's got ventilation holes here and it looks really sharp. So this text is gonna be right side up when it is installed in your case. So you'll be able to read ASUS Matrix GTX 580 just fine. Okay, here we've got our two SLI connectors, so that means that we do have support for multi-way SLI configurations, not just two graphics cards. This is a standard PCIe 2 16X interface, so this is not an SLI on a card, it doesn't require any kind of special connector. The only thing you really have to worry about is the power, so like I said, two 8 pins. All right, on the back, oh, this is interesting, it's got a safe mode button. I guess that's for safe mode. Okay, we have DisplayPort, HDMI, and dual DVI outputs that are covered by little blue covers by default, and they are capable of VGA as well. Everything is very helpfully labeled, not only on the card itself, but also on the plastic piece here. I don't know if you can read that, but it says DVI. Okay, and it's gonna be hard for us to take a good look at the custom PCB that went into this, but, um, why don't we look at the custom cooler first? So we have dual 90 millimeter PWM fans here. So these are full thickness fans. These are not your slim fans that you typically see on these dual card uh, or dual dual fan coolers. So they're going to have some real static pressure behind them. Those are big, fat heat pipes in there too. I want you to kind of try and see down there. Can you see the uh, 
the heat pipes. Yep, there we go. So those are really fat heat pipes. Let me see how many are going to each side of the cooler. So it looks like we've got a total of one, two, three, four, five? Yeah, it looks like, correct me if I'm wrong here, guys, but it looks like we got five heat pipes, uh, two of which are going to this side. Yeah, you can see the heat pipes running through here. One, wait, are there ones going out the other side? No, yeah, okay, yeah, you can see the termination. So there's two coming out here. Remember, this side also has direct heat transfer as well, because the GPU itself is right down there. Okay, and then this one has three heat pipes going through it, so that's carrying heat away from the GPU and then out to this side, where it will be taken away by this fan. Now, this fan also blows down directly onto this heatsink that is going to be cooling the PWM. It looks like the RAM chips do not have heatsinks on them, but they're going to be actively cooled by this fan, which can actually be better for RAM chips in some scenarios. Now this is a fully custom PCB as I mentioned before, so let's start showing you some of those features. Obviously this beefy PWM heatsink is covering a beefy PWM, which is completely custom for this card. You don't have to worry about it blowing up pretty much no matter how much voltage or how much cooling and then how much more voltage you throw at it so hopefully you can see down there reasonably well okay next we have these buttons here so you can turn your fan to 100% with the push of a button that's kind of a cool feature because if you're like okay I'm gonna you know benchmark boom just turn your fan on all the way then you don't have to worry about it uh, ramping up hotter and then catching itself to bring itself back down so you can keep it as cool as possible you can turn the speeds up and down you've got uh, this little indicator set of LEDs here and then finally you've got haha voltage checkpoints so for GPU mem PLL 3 volt 3 3v3 12 volt and ground you have all of those on there so let's see how these fans are hooked up I, okay so this must be to do with this and then it looks like the fans are hooked up through this custom connector right here. Yeah, that would be my that would be my guess. So thank you for checking out my unboxing of the GTX 580 Matrix. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. And oh yeah, last thing, this is a triple slot card. So if you are going to try to run two of these in SLI, make sure you have a card that has very, very wide spacing for the PCIe 16X slot, so the really one of these cards should be providing most of the power you would need for a lot of the games out there these days. Oh, look at this. I've never seen anything this crazy before. Okay, they've actually got labeled solder points for you to do volt mods on this thing. You've got to be kidding me. So you can disable the OCP, that is the overcurrent protection. Uh, I'm not sure what these other markings mean, power, PWM, you can change the PWM frequency, so you can put a variable resistor on there and change that stuff. No way, you can't build that into a video card, that's crazy. So this thing is designed from the ground up for Sub-Zero, that is amazing actually, cool, okay.